Hi, this is Wendy and welcome to my No Frills Java video series. I don't do any fancy video production or anything, so you might hear traffic in the background or my cat meowing or my next door neighbor is arguing in Hindi, but whatever. When you're coding in the real world, you're hearing these and lots of other noises, so just suck it up and get used to it. I'm going to show you some Java stuff and I don't have the time or inclination to create fancy videos with animations and all that other useless crap. We're just going to learn and code with Java. So in this series of videos, I'm going to introduce you to the basics of regular expressions and how to use them in a Java program. In the first video, we learned the basics of regular expression syntax and wrote a few very basic regular expressions. In the second video, we learned how to use character classes to match ranges of characters or sets of characters in your expression. In this third video, we'll see how we can use quantifiers to specify how many of a set of characters we want to match in a string. In the fourth video, we'll talk about escaping characters and also how you can use meta characters as shortcuts for common parts of expressions. In the fifth video, I'll show you how to create more advanced expressions by using capture groups. And in the sixth and seventh videos, I'll show you how to use regular expressions in a Java program. Now you might have noticed at the end of the previous video that if you were to create an expression with many characters, things get a bit inconvenient. For example, if you wanted to write an expression that matches a phone number, and again, I'm in North America, but in the video I mentioned that you could do a phone number for whatever country you're in. Maybe you're in a country where the numbers are smaller. Wouldn't that be nice? This is what it looks like where I come from. I have three digits, a space, or a dash, followed by three more digits, a dash, and four more digits. And so you can see how tedious this is. There are some very valid regular expressions that look quite tedious and scary, but this should not be one of them. So if you didn't have an exact number of digits in your pattern, how would you go about saying like some unknown number of digits, like four digits or between zero and ten digits and that kind of stuff? For example, what if I needed an expression to ensure that the user entered a valid integer with at least one digit? Do you know how many digits the user will enter? No. So how many tokens would we have to use? How would we know to say one, two, three digits or four digits or however, right? We don't want to write really complex regular expressions. Otherwise, why bother? If it's too tedious, we're not going to do it. Thankfully, regular expression syntax includes a set of what we call quantifiers that allow you to specify how many of the preceding token you want to match. So these are the quantifiers that we'll be talking about in this particular video. We can specify one or more of something, zero or more, which basically means it's optional. And if it's there, it can be any number of whatever it is. We can use, I love this one. I call this the optional operator or quantifier. It basically means it's there or it's not there. I don't really care. And then you can specify a series of exact occurrences. So you can say, for example, exactly n, where n is an integer value that's greater than zero. You can say exactly five occurrences, exactly five digits, for example. Or you can say n or more. So exa for example, five or more occurrences of digits. Or you can say between n and m, where m is also an integer greater than zero. So you could say between one and five occurrences or one and five characters or digits inclusive, which means including one and including five. So one, two, three, four, or five occurrences of a token. Let's take a look and see how each one of these works. And of course, we're gonna do some practice exercises as well. So for example, let's say I want to make sure a user enters a whole number. I want to say one or more digits. This is a really popular one. You'll use this a lot. So we know how to do one digit, right? Like that. How do we say one or more? We use the plus sign. So this says one or more digits. So as we scan through our dummy text here, we'll see it's matching. Again, notice that's one solid match right there. Any occurrence of one or more digits, and yes, it's including zero because we said zero to nine. So there's one, there's two, there's five, there's three. So it's matching all of these different sets of individual digits. So it's matching one or more occurrences of a digit. It's that easy. There you have it, a pattern that matches integers. Almost. There's one tiny thing missing. We'll talk about that later, but that's good enough for now. That'll match an integer input that you get your, from your user. Now note that the quantifier only applies to the preceding, preceding means the one before me, so preceding token, so the token that's before the quantifier. So if I had an expression, for example, 
um, a lowercase letter followed by one or more digits. That one or more only applies to the preceding token. It only applies to this token, the zero to nine token. It does not apply to the A to Z. So it's only gonna match a single letter followed by one or more digits. So you'll notice it's matching the B12, the D34. It's matching, this is one match, A1, a second match, B2, a third one, C4. There might be more down here. Oh, did I just see one? Nope, that's just my eyes getting tired. Uh, there's a bunch. Oh yeah, because postal codes. In Canada, our postal codes are crazy. So there we go. So you'll see that it's matching individual occurrences of a lowercase letter. I specifically use lowercase, I don't know why, followed by a digit. So if I had an X followed by some unknown number of digits, that's a match. If I did the same with multiple letters, you'll notice it's only taking the first letter, or I guess that's the last letter, the first letter in front of the digit anyway. So this quantifier only applies to the zero to nine. It doesn't apply to the A to Z. If you're having trouble with regex, one of the things you can do in your regex tool is they usually have a way for you to get an explanation of what your regex is doing. It doesn't fit very well on the screen here, unfortunately, because I've got large, large fonts so that you can see these selections better. But it's something that on your own screen, you can probably read it a bit better. So these usually help um, with explaining the different regexes in case you're having trouble with that. So, so that should make it very, really clear though. The quantifier only applies to the preceding token. If you wanted to say one or more letters followed by one or more digits, then you can do that. So there we go. One or more letters followed by one or more digits. Yeah, there's no reason why you can't do that. Unless that's, you know, not what your program is supposed to do. Now, one of the things you'll notice, I'm just gonna pop back to this. One of the things that you're probably noticing is it's putting in a match on something like this. If I have A, B, C, and then a bunch of digits, it's matching the C followed by the bunch of digits. It's not matching the A and the B. And that's just because of, we're using this tool that allows us to put all this different di all this different text in this one text area. If you're writing a program and you've got a single input field and you're asking the user to enter a certain code for something, this may not actually be acceptable because you want the entire field to be a match, right? Not only a part of the field. And that's something we're gonna talk about in a later video. So if that's bothering you as we're doing these exercises, don't worry, we are gonna cover that situation later on, but not today. Now, another one of the quantifiers you might have seen is the asterisk symbol. So that means zero or more. So this one's interesting. So this matches any single letter followed by zero or more digits. Remember that zero or more means that it may not be there at all, or there may be one or more digits. So what, using the wildcard is something you wanna be careful of. So this is a single letter followed by zero or more digits. So you'll notice, and it's a lowercase letter specifically, you'll notice that it's matching all these single letter, lowercase letter occurrences because they are followed by zero or more digits. So it, that's why it's matching all of these lowercase letters, including the ones you would expect to match, right? Like these ones, because it's one or more digits after, or zero or more digits after an individual letter. Now you wanna be careful with the asterisk because you can end up in some pretty bad situations. For example, if I did something like this, I'm using digits here, but it could be letters as well. You'll get this warning that pops up and the message is kind of self-explanatory. It basically says this expression matches zero or more characters. It means that there's an infinite number of matches because think about it, everything is zero or more, in this case, digits, or if you chose letters, zero or more letters. So this matches anything that is no digits or more digits. So that's why not only is it matching the things we would expect, but everything is zero or more digits. Even this this little, you know, between letters, if it's between the E and the G here, that's zero digits, <laughs> so that matches. So you wanna be really careful when you use that wildcard symbol because this is infinite matches. So be very, very careful when you're using the wildcard symbol. You don't wanna use it by itself, but it is still useful. So for example, let's say you wanna look at an input from the user and make sure that it's a number that starts with two. So you could say a two followed by 
any digit zero to nine and I'll say zero or more. So that means this is gonna match things like, it'll match 20, 21, 29, 299, 200, 23,523, and just two. Oops. So it'll match all of those different numbers. So anything that starts with a two, so it won't match 12, for example. What did I hit there? Or 0.12, why not? So it won't match any of those because they don't start with two, but it matches the individual two inside those strings, right? So it only matches something that is a two by itself or followed by another digit. So a two followed by zero or more other digits. So that's kind of a nice practical use of the wildcard symbol. Now, another one that I like is I like the optional quantifier because it means that the preceding token is either there or not there. So let's say you want to match a domain name that is either .com or .co. In a lot of European countries, they might use co. So .com or .co. So I use the question mark to say that the M is optional. So if we look down, I think I have a, there we go, a big block of URLs. So you'll see it's matching com or co. And there's probably other spots throughout the document too, but it finds any matching C followed by O, and then there may or may not be an M after that. So the M is optional. So it's kind of cool when you want to match an optional character. I use this one a lot. So test your knowledge so far before we get into the rest of the quantifier. See if you can write regular expressions for each of the following scenarios. So you can match, there's, in North America, there's two ways to write color because the rest of the world spells it C-O-L-O-U-R and in America they spell it, or in USA, they spell it C-O-L-O-R. So see if you can write a regular expression that matches the word color with or without a U. And then another one, match a word in title case. Title case just means that the word starts with a capital letter. So we call that title case. And then why not? Let's get evil and match a Canadian postal code. So Canadian postal codes are letter, number, letter. And then there may or may not be a space. Some people put a space in there. Some people don't. Both are perfectly valid. And then number, letter, number. So the L stands for letter and the N stands for number. And again, there may or may not be a space in there. The Canadian Postal Code one, there's actually more rules to Canadian Postal Codes, but this will start us off kind of nice. And let's just make it even more evil. A lot of people type their postal codes in upper or lowercase letters. So try that. So go ahead and try those exercises. Go ahead and pause the video. Try each of these on your own. Record your answers somewhere. And then when you're done, resume the video so that you can check your answers as we take them up. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to give those exercises a try. I'm going to go through each one of them. So the first one was to match the word color with or without a U. So this is almost completely a literal match. So C-L-O-O-U-R, but the U may or may not be there. So the U is optional. So it'll match color with or without an O. And then just for testing purposes here, I'm going to spew that in there. I put in a couple of misspelled words. That's French, I think. That's how you spell it in French. And then cooler because we are cooler. So you'll see that it matches color with or without a U. That one was nice and easy. The second one was to match a regular expression that matches a word in title case. So an uppercase letter followed by any number of lowercase letters. And there's two ways you can do this one because it just depends on whether you want to count words that have a single letter like a ah or I as a word, and I mean, they're words grammatically. So if you included single letter words like a uh, or I, then you would have a slightly different answer. If you didn't think about the single letter words, that's okay. So I want to match an uppercase letter followed by, and you might have thought to do one or more lowercase letters. So you can do A to Z. Make sure your case insensitive flag is off if you're doing this one. So one or more. So it'll look for any word in title case. And I'll just add I like. Oops, that's not grammatically correct. Now it is. There we go. Now if you thought about the letter I, that's a word and it's in title case, but it's not matching. That's because you could say an uppercase letter followed by zero or more. 
So there could be more lowercase letters after it or not. Honestly, I didn't specify. I didn't remind you. So either one is fine, but now you know. So you could write that in two different ways. I think if you were working with uh, text, like actual text, like a book or something, you'd probably do it this way because single letter characters or single letter words do count as characters. So I would count those. So I would probably choose the second version of this as the more correct one. Now, the next one. The next one's on postal codes. So let me scroll down to my Canadian postal codes here. I should have a bunch of these. There we go. There's some postal codes. So the Canadian postal codes one, yes, this one's kind of evil. So this one, and I'm going to do upper or lower case. So this is where copy and paste is nice. So I'm going to do A to Z, A to Z. Let me just put that in the clipboard right now. Followed by a digit. Followed by another letter, and then an optional space. So if you just want like a space, you just type a space and then that's your character. You'll notice in your tool, in your regex tester, it shows up as an actual little gray. It's hard to see in this video, I'm sure, but it shows up as a little dot. If you have this on your own screen, it's probably easier to see. So it should show up as a little dot, but even if you hover over, you'll see it's actually a space. It's actually a character. It has a value, an ASCII value. And so I can just put the optional question mark right beside it. The space is optional. Later, I'll show you another way to do space, but it's all space. Like, like tabs, new lines, etc. But I just want a space. So I just type the space bar and then continue. What's the next thing? Letter number or num letter number letter and now number. So digit and then letter and then digit or number. There we go. So there's my look all of my Canadian postal codes with the optional space. There we go. And again, that's actually not the complete regex for a proper Canadian postal code, but I think the real one is a different exercise. You have to learn a couple more things first, and it's way more complicated. There are certain letters you can't use in certain positions. It's a bit insane, but apparently it means something to Canada postal system. So there we go. Let's look at the rest of these quantifiers that we haven't seen yet. So we mentioned the ones that have specific numbers in them inside these curly braces. And again, they apply to the preceding token. So we can look for an exact number of occurrences or N or more occurrences or between two exact like N to M, one to five, two to four, whatever occurrences. And again, that's inclusive as we'll see. So we'll try some examples of that. Get rid of that ugly postal code example. All right, so let's say we're looking for exactly three digits. I just say zero to nine, and then the three in curly braces. So it'll match all the occurrences of exactly three digits, right? So it's an easier way. Um, before we would put zero to nine, zero to nine, zero to nine, we would put this token three times. You don't need to. You can just do that. Another thing you could do is say three or more occurrences. So now if I add the comma, it's matching the three, but now it's also matching more than three. So if a particular string, can't get these to hover, there we go, has more than three, there we go, that's better. Then you'll see that it matches the more than three. There's one that's a four, a three, there's another four, because these are pieces, ah, sorry, pieces of phone numbers. There's a five down there. So it's highlighting all of these different matches of three or more digits. And then you could say something like between two and four digits. So this means either two digits, three digits, or four digits. So you'll see all of these are occurrences of two, three, or four digits. Notice it's skipping the singles and it's not including anything that's more than four. So there you go. So those different ways you can use to do quantifiers. So lots of quantifiers that you can use. And this is where you can start, you can start doing real regex now with everything that you've learned so far about characters and quantifiers. I mean, when I first learned regex, this is as far as I went to get what I needed. I was matching course codes. And in fact, I'm gonna give you that as an exercise. So try these exercises. We're gonna do a couple. So uh, write a regular expression that matches a college or university course code that is four letters, exactly four letters, no more, no less, followed by exactly five digits, no more, no less. That one should be pretty easy. And then try this fancy one, a product code. So a product code is some company that sells something, widgets, I don't know, one to three letters. So one letter, two letters, or three letters, any case. And it doesn't say up here, I'm gonna assume the course code 
Um, we'll do any case as well, but if you want the practice, you can do all uppercase because typically when course codes are displayed, they're uppercase, but you can do any if you prefer. So one to three letters in any case, followed by a dash. You just type the dash. You don't have to do anything special. Followed by four or more digits. So here's some examples of codes that would match that pattern just in case. And you can probably come up with other ones and make sure you add a few that don't match the pattern just so you can test your regex out. So as usual, try these exercises and pause the video, go ahead and give them a try, write your answers down somewhere. And then when you're done, resume the video and then you can check your answers with my solutions. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to give those exercises a try. So for the first one, it was the course codes. And again, if you chose any case or uppercase, it doesn't really matter. You can do whatever you like. So I'm going to do any case. You'll notice that I'm not using that case insensitive flag for some of these where I probably could use it. And that's fine. You can use it if you want. If it's case insensitive, that's totally okay. I'm used to programming with Java where it's just a pain to add the case insensitive flags. I'm used to coding it like this. It doesn't matter though. Don't let anyone tell you that's incorrect. This is totally fine. But if you like using the flag, go for it, use the flag. So four, so exactly four letters followed by, so digits. Remember that the quantifier applies to the preceding token. So four of these, this token, and then five of this token, zero to nine. So four digits and five, sorry, I read that backwards, four letters followed by five digits. So here I made up, just made up some course codes. So you'll see some of these you think shouldn't match, but they do. This one, because it's in the middle of a bunch of other stuff, that's something we're going to talk about. Um, there's one, same thing. There is four letters followed by five digits. There just happens to be more after, but that's the match right there. And there's another one. So I got a couple matches in there. Again, something that we're going to talk about, like how is this a valid course code, this whole thing? It's not. It's actually finding a valid course code within the string. This is not going to be acceptable in a lot of programs. So we are going to talk in a few minutes about how to solve that issue. And then the product code, we're actually going to have the same thing. So that's the course code. The product code example, I think I want to save that A to Z because it's such a pain in the butt to type. So we have uh, upper or lowercase letter, one to three. So I'm going to do one comma three so whoops no space so between one and three inclusive so one two or three letters followed by a dash you can just type the dash later i'll talk about um, which characters you have to escape because they have special meaning i purposely made sure i picked one that you didn't have to worry about and then digits so four or more digits so zero to nine and then for four or more four comma there we go. So four more digits. So almost all of these, all of these have a match. So you'll see there's one letter and four digits. It's got to be four or more. So that matches one to three letters, two letters, five digits, three letters, four digits. Again, all of these matches have at least four digits. I didn't add any in here that didn't have four digits. So I'll add a couple. There we go. X, Y, one, two, three, four. Nope. One, two, three. There we go. So we can just double check, put some bad data in there too, right? You want to make sure it doesn't capture your bad data. So there we go. And again, you'll notice some of these you think that shouldn't match, right? If somebody typed this into an input field on a form in a web app or a desktop application, that shouldn't be acceptable because there's extra characters in front of it, right? So in most programs, that's going to be a bit of a problem, especially if you're, you know, if you just want a number, you don't want to get extra characters in your number that don't count, right? So that's something that you want to um, think about and fix, and we will. What we want to say is that our expression should match the entire input not some of the input. So these ones, these are all fine because it matches the entire value. This one is not because it matches more than the value. Yes, it found a match in the value, but we don't want this stuff, right? We don't want that to match. So that's something that we're going to talk about. So we can fix this using the anchors. So the anchors, there's the caret symbol, 
That's the starts with. And then there's the dollar sign symbol. We did talk about the carrot symbol earlier. So I'm going to remind you of that discussion in a minute. So we got the carrot symbol and the dollar sign symbol. Carrot means start with. Dollar sign means ends with. And we can use these two symbols to solve that problem of there being partial matches in a field where we want the whole field to match instead. So the carrot symbol, we'll do that one first. We use that to indicate that a string value must start with that specific pattern. So for example, if I said, and again, make sure the carrot is on the outside. Remember earlier we had it on the inside and it means not or excluded. So we don't want that. We want it on the outside. So this means that the string I'm matching must start with a digit. You'll notice the M flag in there. I'm going to talk about that. Remember I talked about the M flag in the beginning and said it's not going to make any sense until we get there. This is the time. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So it starts with a digit. So that's how I might use the starts with or the carrot symbol or the caret operator. We call it a start of word boundary. So if I wanted to try that as an example, and I do 0 to 9, what you'll notice is it doesn't necessarily work the way you would expect right away, and it's because of that M flag. So I typed in three examples. It matches the first digit of this one, but it doesn't match this and it doesn't match this. And that's just because when you're using a tool like this one, the entire window, this entire window here with all the text is one single input. What we want to do is we want to be able to tell it to treat each individual line of our window as a single input. So we want it to pretend that that's one input and then this is another separate input and this is a third input. So we wanted to pretend that's like say one text field on a form and that's the next text field on the form and that's the next one on the form. So that's what we want to do. So by default this whole thing is one single text field. Wouldn't that be hideous? This whole thing is one single text field. So of course it says match a single digit when it's the first thing in the string. So that's why it only finds this one match in the front, right? Because that's the first digit. That's the digit that's the first character in a string. If I add an A up and above, now the one doesn't match because now there's a letter as the first digit in this giant input string. So it says, nope, that's not a match because it's only matching if the first thing in the input is a digit not a letter. So that's why it no longer matches. It doesn't match. See, even with an enter key, that's a new line character. The enter key it doesn't match. That's not a digit. Now it matches because now the very first character is a digit. You know how you can tell when you hover, it says range zero. Remember when you're counting and programming, the first thing is zero. You don't start at one. You start at zero. Zero, one, two, three. So the first thing is in position zero. If the first thing in position zero is not an, a digit, it's not going to match. So that's why. Now, that's useless right now, right? For us, it's not what we want. So this is where the multi-line flag comes in handy. When you turn on the multi-line flag, it says treat each one of these lines like a separate input. Notice, look, any line of, of text here that starts with a digit, it's highlighting that digit. Look at that. So there you go. It's not always going to be useful. You probably won't need this in a programming language like Java. You might use it in JavaScript though, but it's kind of helpful when you're using boundaries. If you're testing these boundary characters, you're going to have to turn on the multi-line flag and then just turn it off when you're done because then other stuff is going to work. So I might want to write a regular expression that says that uh, something needs to start with letters. So A to Z, A to Z, for example, and I'll do um, exactly three. So let's say I want to do an input that matches exactly three letters. So you'll notice all of the individual lines, we're going to call them inputs because we're going to pretend they're inputs, that start with three letters, exactly three letters, not fewer than three letters, and not more than three letters right? It's matching only exactly three letters. When it's more than three, it just doesn't match those, right? They don't match. It only matches the first, oh look, a typo. It only matches the first three letters. And it treats each one of these like a separate input. So that's kind of cool. Now again, if you, let me try some other examples. If you're trying to test it out and you have stuff like this, 
right? You think, why isn't it matching this? Why isn't it matching this? Because they're separate inputs. You actually have to put them each on a separate line because we're in multi-line mode. It's again, you can't test the, it's supposed to tell me to put an actual space bar there. You can't test, there we go. You can't test these boundaries in regular mode. You have to switch to multi-line mode only when you're testing. When you're right using it in an actual program, it's not a big deal. So that's what multi-line mode is for. So you'll see it's matching three characters, three letters, but only when they're the first three things in the string, which is what we want. So that one was supposed to have a space in front, so there's no match. There we go. So this one doesn't match because the first three things are not letters. There's a space in there. There we go. Now remember, when you put the caret symbol inside the character class, it means something different. It means exclude. Don't put the caret inside the character class. Put it outside. When you want to mean exclude or not, you put it inside. Otherwise, you put it outside. And somebody says, what if I want to exclude this? There's a different way of doing that, using capture groups, which is covered in a later video. I want to say the next video, but that might be wrong. Now, the dollar sign does the same thing as the caret symbol does, but with the end of a string. So, for example, if I said zero to nine dollar sign, that will match any single digit that is at the end of an input string. Again, in order to test this properly, you have to be in multi-line mode. So, if I went here and instead of saying starts with, I'll just say starts with a single letter, or sorry, ends with a single letter, and you'll notice right away I've got no matches. And you're thinking, well, wait, that ends with a letter, that ends with a letter, um, that ends with a letter. I don't know if, how well you can tell. Again, you might have to stick your face right up to the screen here or look at your own screen. See these dots? Remember, those are spaces. So it doesn't end with a letter. It ends with a space. So we just delete the spaces. Oh, look. So if I delete the spaces, and I don't know, I can't see it, but I know it's there because I used to be able to see it when my eyes were better. But there's also a funky little sort of angled line like a straight line across and then down that represents the enter key or the new line character so that doesn't count so you're good there but i'm going to get rid of all the spaces at the ends not that they matter in some of these because they already end with other stuff but there we go so anytime there's a single letter at the end it matches match any single letter uppercase or lowercase, that occurs at the end of a string. And if you want to do three of those letters, then yeah, you can do three. So match any three letters that occur at the end of a string. Doesn't matter, right? They all work. Now you can use both of these anchors together. And this is what's really cool. So you could do something like this. So this says it starts and ends with exactly three letters and there's nothing allowed in front and there's nothing allowed after. It's only gonna match exactly three letters. So if I look at my example here, if I just add that caret symbol in front, you'll notice only one of these strings matches. It's the one that starts and ends with exactly three letters. None of these match because there's more stuff that has, this one has stuff after or before, this one has stuff after, this one's got stuff before and after, same with this one, etc. So this one has stuff after. So it only matches, or you could look at it if you're looking at it this way, it has stuff before. So that only this one matches exactly three characters and it starts and ends. Basically, you've used the two boundaries together. It means it only contains this and cannot contain anything else. So if you add this to the example we did with the course codes, do I still have my course codes here? Did I get rid of them? Oh no, they're right there. So if I did this to the course code example where I had any four letters followed by exactly five digits, you'll notice now, and again, because I'm in multi-line mode, I'm gonna have to put all of these on their own line with no spaces at the ends, just to make sure. There we go. Oh, what, I get a warning. Ah, oh, there we go. There. So notice only this one matches, which is the way it should be. This is not a valid course code. It contains, no, it doesn't, this one does. It contains a valid course code, but the whole thing is not a valid course code. Same with this one. It contains a valid course code, and this one 
in there somewhere contains a valid course code, but the whole input is not a valid course code. Imagine asking the user for a course code and they type this in an input field. That'd be like, nope. That doesn't match, sorry. So only this one matches. So I love these two symbols. You should always use these two symbols. Um, now, thankfully, in languages like Java, I can't remember if JavaScript does this, but in Java, they assume that those are already included. So the nice thing about Java is you don't actually have to include the anchors because they're included already as part of the method. In fact, if you want to turn them off, you have to add extra code to turn them off or use different methods. It just depends on what you're doing, how you're doing it. In JavaScript, I can't remember. You might have to use them in JavaScript. I'm not sure. It's been too long since I've done a regex in JavaScript, unfortunately. So now one of the things that I used to have trouble with was remembering which one of these was the starts with and which one was the ends with. And I always made up these like rhymes and mnemonics and stuff to help me remember. So I don't know if this is going to help you at all, but the way that I taught myself, like seriously for years, I could never remember. I always had to waste time going and looking it up, which was frustrating. So I finally remembered a way to sort of remind myself which one is the front so which, which one is the starts with and which one is the ends with out of the two symbols? Um, I just had a phrase I said to myself and it goes like this. If you want me to wear this stupid hat at the start of the day, and this also kind of looks like a hat. So if you want me to wear the stupid hat at the start of the day, then you're going to have to pay me some money at the end of the day. There you go. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it worked. Now I never forget. So if you want me to wear the stupid hat at the start, you have to pay me some money because the dollar sign means money at the end. So there you go. You might have a better way of doing it and that's fine. That's just my way and I'll share that with you. Okay, try this exercise. So earlier you wrote a regular expression that matched integers or we saw one that matched integer values. So modify that expression so that it only matches integer numbers with nothing else in the string, just digits. So imagine each one of these, I should have written these in a better font, but imagine a one, a 12, a one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Each of these is an individual, that's a zero, and then zero, one, two, three. Ooh. So each of these is a separate input. So in your tester, you put these all on a different line. Those all match, but these things do not. So you're going to make a regex for an integer value. So an integer value with any number of digits, zero to nine, and nothing else in there. Go ahead, pause the video, give that exercise a try, record your answer somewhere so that when you're done, you can resume the video and then you can compare it to my solution. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to give that a try and here's my solution. So we saw earlier that if you wanna match an integer number, you just use the zero to nine character class with the plus sign, one or more digits. And to make sure that it's only one or more digits and nothing else, so all of these match here. Um, but these ones should not match, trying to scroll a bit. These ones should not match because there's a decimal point. That's not an integer, not a whole number. This one has letters, this one has letters, and this one has letters. So these ones don't match at all. I use my boundary characters. So I use the beginning or start of the string and then the end of the string. And again, make sure you have the multi-line on. You can't really test these out if you're not in multi-line mode. When you're done, you can turn the multi-line back off again. But there you go, there's your solution. So this again, it, the integer one, that's a very common thing. You'll do that one a lot. Now, so far we've written some very useful patterns, but there's probably a few that you've been thinking about that seem a bit tricky still. So for example, how would you write an expression that matches a floating point number? We need to learn a few more things in order to do that. So first, how can we match the decimal point? Because it's actually a special character in regex, as you'll see later. So if you've already tried, you might notice that you'll probably get some errors or it's maybe not working the way that you think when you try all different kinds of values. So we'll talk about this plus meta characters in the next video. Until then, thanks for watching.